the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Welcome to our parishioners from St. Edward's Golders Green, and others who may also be watching this recording of the Mass for the 29th of March 2020, the fifth Sunday of Lent. Hamas today is being offered for Jean Antonian. Our liturgy today reminds us that God has brought us back from the death of our sins to a life of friendship with him. Lazarus, the friend of Jesus, is brought back from the dead. We too, like the exiles in the prophet Ezekiel's time, are welcomed back to our true home with God. Let us acknowledge our need for conversion and ask God to restore us to his love. 
Lord Jesus, you comforted Mary and Martha. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you wept for your friend. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you raised Lazarus from the dead. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I'm now going to open your graves, I mean to raise you from your graves, my people, and lead you back to the soil of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, my people. And I shall put my spirit in you, and you will live. And I shall resettle you on your own soil, and you will know that I, the Lord, have said and done this. It is the Lord who speaks, the word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. People who are interested only in unspiritual things can never be pleasing to God. Your interests, however, are not in the unspiritual, but in the spiritual, since the Spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, unless you possess the Spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. Though your body may be dead, it is because of sin. But if Christ is in you, then your spirit is life itself, because you have been justified. And if the spirit of him 
who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. And he who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies through his spirit living in you. The word of the Lord. The Gospel Acclamation. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The sisters Martha and Mary sent this message to Jesus. Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death, but in God's glory, and through it the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he learned that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was, for two more days before saying to the disciples, let us go to Judea. On arriving, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, Whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. Jesus said in great distress, with a sigh that came straight from the heart, where have you put him? They said, see how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, he opened the eyes of the blind man could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of all those who stand round me, so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, here, come out. The dead man came out, his feet and hands bound with bands of stuff and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I've been blessed in my life to have three sisters, all older than me. And I know that I need to be a bit careful what I say here now because they, they could be watching this. Two of the sisters live in England and I see them regularly and our lives have kind of gone on together. The other sister who was the first one to leave home. She's been a kind of a traveler, really, and so we haven't seen her as much 
as I would have seen the other members of the family. Now, as I say, with the, the two sisters here in England, our lives have kind of rolled along together. We've, I suppose you could say we've grown old together. But by only seeing my other sister intermittently, it can seem as though we're almost stuck in, a, in the way we were before. So I'm the, the kind of little brother to the big sister. And although I'm the, I'm the parish priest of St. Edward's Golders Green, she still kind of straightens my clothes in the way that my mother used to do. I'm the same person, but it seems I come across differently to, to different people. Now, it can seem as though we've got more than one version of the Lord Jesus. When in fact we do, we have four official Gospels as Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. For most of this year, we've been following the gospel and the version of Jesus of St. Matthew. Now, for St. Matthew, Jesus is he's a great teacher. He's magisterial. He's giving great sermons like the Sermon on the Mount. And Mark and Luke, they too have their own particular perspectives on the person of Jesus and what they think is really important. Now, for the last three Sundays we've been following the Gospel of John. And John too has a particular way of looking at the person of Jesus. For him, Jesus is a regal figure. He's the, the king on the cross. He's serene and composed. And he's in command of himself, even when he's at the point of death. Nothing is going to overcome him. And so we come today to the story from St. John of the raising of the friend of Jesus, Lazarus. I think there's no hiding the fact that this story has difficulties for us. For an age where we are almost too sophisticated and we find stories of the, of the miraculous very difficult to take on board in our scientific way of thinking about things. So what, what, can we, what can we make of this? Well, John is not telling or showing a documentary. And in fact, you can't really reconstruct the events that he's talking about in the way that we would, in a sort of forensic way, so that all the evidence is, is laid out piece by piece. It's not that kind of account. And I think we've got to be sure that we, we let John speak to us in his own terms. And that's in a way that is reflecting the whole way that he sees Jesus and the kind of person that he is. Now remember, the followers of Jesus and those who, who flocked to hear him, they were generally poor. They lived under a very brutal Roman regime. They were harassed by unscrupulous tax collectors. They had many illnesses. They were ravaged by disease, and we find Jesus meeting many of them in the course of his ministry. And of course, death itself was very ever-present. Remember the story of the, the, the son of the widow of Nain. People died much earlier than we did. Their lives were very fragile, subject to all these pressures and dangers that surrounded them. In those moments, Jesus comes across as the person who is serene in the face of whatever might happen. He's not going to be deterred. There is no danger that is greater than he is. And that comes across now in this story of Lazarus. The story of Lazarus is told as a prelude to the story of the death of Jesus himself. And at that moment, 
There is no loss of his own serenity. He is in command. He is the king. In these last few weeks, we've all been reminded, and perhaps the whole world has been reminded, of our vulnerability, that we are close to danger when perhaps we had thought we were, we were so free and so able to do whatever we wanted. At this moment, the, the person of Jesus comes across to us as the model of how a human person is meant to be, someone who is free, free also of the fear of anything that might happen, including that last frontier of death, which can seem to us like the fatal blow, but with Jesus, it is not. With Jesus, we are safe. In him, we can trust. And now we proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, though we stand in need of liberation from the entombment of sin, we know we are loved by Christ as Lazarus was. As the family of the church, we therefore offer our prayers to the Father, knowing that he will always hear us. Let us pray for the church throughout the world, for Pope Francis and all the bishops, that in every corner of the earth the faith we have in Christ may shine out in the witness of Christian communities. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that each of us may hear afresh God's call to follow in the path of discipleship, so that in our families, our schools, our work, and in all the routines of our daily lives, God's love may be seen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who suffer from COVID-19, for all those in the NHS who care for them, and for all of us staying at home in today's challenging circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the aid agencies working to alleviate the spread of the virus in the developing nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this Sunday's Mass intentions for the people of the parish and for the repose of the soul of Jean Antonian. May his soul 
and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died recently and for all whose anniversaries occur at this time. We remember the anniversary of Father de Felice, parish priest here for many years, who died this week in 1978. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We turn to Mary, that as we prepare for Holy Week and Easter, our faith in her Son may be strengthened. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now let us pray for a few moments in silence for our own needs and intentions. Father, just as you listened to the prayers of your son so that Lazarus could come forth, be unbound and begin his life again, may your spirit renew us through your grace. And may you grant the prayers we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Let's pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, who with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> now, obedient to our Lord's command, <coughs> let's pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. And can we now, as best we can, offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Thank you. 
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Now, our Mass schedule, as you all know by now, public Masses and services have been suspended both on Sundays and weekdays. Each weekday we are offering a daily broadcast with prayer and a gospel reflection. We'll also broadcast daily Mass, except Wednesdays and Saturdays. The morning reflection is usually posted about 7 a.m. And the daily Mass, except for Wednesdays and Saturdays, about midday. The broadcast of the Sunday Mass will be available from Saturday evening. Search for these services on the usual parish YouTube channel. Now the food bank. We have planned to be a collection point every Sunday during the present crisis, and this will continue in the following way. The church porch, but not the main church, with the collecting bin, will be open on Sunday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And you can leave any items you've been able to spare during that period. Items requested are bars of soap, tins of meat, sugar, washing powder, tablet pods are preferable, coffee and oil. Please, though, be careful about your own safety. Observe the usual rules about keeping a distance from other people and return home in good time. Now, behold 2020. This is the event that celebrates the rededication of England as the Dowry of Mary. This is taking place at midday this Sunday. If you'd like to join what is known as the Angelus Promise, whereby you can make a personal dedication to Mary, please find the separate broadcast on the YouTube channel entitled the Angelus Promise. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and it's the beginning of Holy Week. How we can celebrate the most important week in our church year in the present circumstances is not clear. But I hope we can keep you informed by way of YouTube and the MailChimp email. In the meantime, thank you for sharing this Mass with me together. I'll be safe and well and keep in contact with your family and friends and those around you who may need support at this time. Have you remembered that the clocks go forward this weekend? God bless you all. Let's bow our head for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mr. Quo